Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbi alameen. This, what I'm about to say is, is a response to someone who questions my approach to the Quran. I just wanted to respond in this manner to capture it for others, maybe in the near future, maybe in the future, inshallah. Who knows? Allah does. Let me give you the context. person asked me how I can understand the Quran without context. Context of Hadith, of Sunnah, of history, and all of these things. And here's my response. <clears throat> Here is the difference in our approach. I read the Quran with these understandings. Some basic premises, some principles. One, it is from Allah. Two, it is perfect. Three, it is fully detailed. Four, it is a guidance to all mankind. Five, it is a guidance for all situations. Six, it is sent to Muhammad, and he sent it to us. Seven, it is the utterance of a noble messenger, prophet. Eight, it is the criteria, the fulcrum. Nine, there is no contradictions in it. Ten, it will lead to me. It will lead me to paradise and an abode that I want to experience if I were to follow it. After I read the Quran for the first time, I was able to establish those basic premises. Now when I read it, I think about a specific topic. For example, I may be able to analyze, after reading the Quran all the way through that first time, the second time I can go into it and analyze it from the standpoint of this question. What is a believer? And I analyze it that way in order to gain understanding about that specific question. I can come up with an infinite amount of questions for Allah, and if I read the Quran, I will get an infinite amount of answers based out of the Quran. I can analyze it differently for each day and every issue of my life, and each time I read it, it will be new. If I analyze it in that way, it never gets old. If I analyze it in that way, I can read it three times, five times, ten times a day. I can read a single ayah. At independent, at independently separate times during the day and I will finish the Quran even after pondering it consistently every month if we take the longest chapters we take the first 14 chapters the longest 14 chapters out we have 100 chapters you divide those 100 chapters by 3 times a day giving yourself however many times you pray during the day it doesn't matter to me let's say you pray 3 times a day during those 3 times a day you read the Quran and you're finished the Quran in its entirety after a month. Some of them you can, some of the surahs you can do shorter. Then you read the long ones at night before you go to bed. Every month you would have the Quran done. And you would be able to take notes and write down what you learned about the believer. If that is your mission. For me the context is in life in general. I can learn about the history of the Muslims from the Quran or the disbelievers or the believers from the Quran. I can learn about life, sayings, readings, warnings, teachings, the teachers, hereafter, belief, disbelief, hellfire, paradise, prophets, messengers, angels, jinn, anas. I can learn about women. I can learn about men. I can learn about how children were treated. I can learn about the earth. I can learn about uh, the planets. I can learn about the sky. I can learn about the universe. I have questions that can all be answered. If I just ask the question, do you not think that Allah would not answer the question of the believer if the believer is sincere and wants to be guided? I can read these things without someone telling me what to look for, because if I only listen to what somebody tells me to look for, then I'm only looking for what they want me to see. And I'll only work on that premise. All the other premises, if I accept the questions or the ideas of another person over the premises that of those 10 premises that I talk about, I will ultimately miss the entire point of the Quran because this whole time I would have followed the words of my uh, imam or scholar, whoever. Every time they told me to read the Quran, I went through reading the Quran, analyzing a hadith or analyzing the sunnah. Instead of just taking it for what it is, the word that Allah delivered to Muhammad, the word that Muhammad delivered to me, and the word that I am to convey to those people who need it, the words that I'm supposed to do in action, all the things that I'm supposed to do in action, 
And if I do those two things, I'm obeying. This is why I can't, this is why I can see things the way that I do. And this is why most people don't see things the way that I do. This is why they see it their way. And this is why they disagree. For them, the Quran is a book that explains the Hadith and the Sunnah. To them, it's it's a message from Allah. Yeah, yeah. But deep down, subconsciously, they're saying that this other thing, this other thing that they actually try to practice, <laughs> they try to put in action of what the Prophet did, is actually there to... Um, augment the Quran. Therefore, they are deep down, it doesn't matter if they acknowledge it or not, they are deep down disbelieving. It you can we can sit here and argue the points all day long. The truth is still there. If you can say that something in the lost book is not right, then you're something's wrong with you and the clear what is wrong with you is your disbelief. But you are guided by other people who say, no, 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 no. No, brother and sister, no no, 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 this is okay. No, you are the believer. Don't listen to those guys who say they follow the Quran alone. Don't listen to them. Something's wrong with them. Don't they understand that there's no context? Don't they understand that the messenger forgot to give them this thing? Or that this, or that some goat ate this uh, Quranic verse? Or that they, they can't actually practice what the Quran teaches them because it's too difficult? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, you're going to argue with me about this? Wait. Wait, the Quran says it's complete and it's protected, right? Yeah, but but don't you still need wait? What what which other question? Oh, the Quran does say it's easy, but but the Quran is not easy because it's in Arabic. And oh, you think? Well, you don't believe in my hadith. You're a mushrik. You're a kafir. You're a disbeliever. Wake up, Muslims. I understand you and your reasonings for saying the things that you do. I actually, honestly do. I used to think just like you when I too was 19, when I was 20, when I was 21. When I was that age, when I was 18, I joined the Marines thinking I was fighting terrorism and thinking I was fighting the Muslim. Look at me now. I proclaim this religion daily without a doubt. And there is no doubt in my heart about Allah and about this deen. I understand the pain that you would feel if you were to say that you disbelieve in what they, your entire family, disbelieve in, um, believe in. I used to be a Christian for many years, adamantly reading the Bible and going to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday when all of my family didn't. When I turned away from their belief, all of a sudden now they're going to church every Sunday. Don't think for a single second. That I don't understand how you would feel if you were to leave the disbelieving people of your family. Don't think I don't understand how you feel when I tell you that what you're following is false. I had to deal with that same reckoning, that same reckoning in my own life on numerous occasions. I had to deal with that with my Marine buddies. I had to deal with that with my family. I had to deal with that with the friends that I grew up with. I had to deal with that with my former football team members. I could talk about this daily on how this belief in general has guided me to understanding and how everybody else has really fallen to the wayside. But that is not important. What's important is that you're denying the words of Allah by saying you need anything else to augment it. Allah guided me through the Quran and through the reading of the Quran, and I woke up from the fog that was my life. And every day I thank Allah for that. Every day I wake up, I pray. Every day I go to sleep, and I'm, I'm humbled. I'm in awe. You may be humble and you may be all, but you're in humbled and all over words that somebody told you that somebody else said. But Allah gives you that perfect thing. Sure. You want to prove that something is correct. I understand that. You want to prove me wrong. I overstand that. The problem is that when you tell me what you think or what you know about the Quran, I hear the same things that I used to be taught. I hear the truth and I hear the falsehood in your voices. I hear the talk of the institutions that tell you these things. Hey, 
look at the Quran through the lens of history, through the lens of Hadith, through the lens of the Sunnah, through the lens of those people who came before you. Instead of telling you this, look at the Quran through the lens of Allah being absolutely perfect and the absolute truth. Look at the Quran through the lens of his protection and the truth that he says he will protect it. And through the lens of Allah, given it as an easy guidance for all of mankind. I know that this is hard for you to grasp. I know this. I know this from the bottom of my heart. And I completely have empathy and sympathize with your position. I understand firsthand how difficult it is to wake up from your fog of whatever you're living in. And take hold of the Quran and not read anything else. I understand the fear. I understand the idea. I went through a divorce a few years back. Because the person that I was spending my life with. Could not fathom of the things that I was going through. And when I told them that this was my journey. We fell to pieces. Don't think that I don't understand the trials and tribulations and the issues that you're going through in your brain. But I can't follow the I can't stop following the Hadith because if I do, then I will be a disbeliever. When Allah says nothing of the sort, he gives the definition of what a believer is. And your job is to analyze that and to follow that. But you should really ask yourself, what benefit does Teddy get by talking to me about this? What does he actually, why doesn't he just ignore this point and ignore me for asking him these questions and talking to him like this? Why is he attempting to teach me when I feel that I'm supposed to be teaching him? I know Arabic. I know the Hadith. I know the Sunnah. I know Allah. I think. I know the Quran. I think. What benefit do I have in talking to him if I am actually right? Why am I even wasting my time? How can I help this crazy guy if he only uses a Quran and the Quran is his shield and he gets the Quran from Allah and Allah is his protection? What do I think I'm going to prove? These are the questions that you should really honestly ask yourself. These are those questions that you should really honestly ask yourself. And then I have another set of questions that are entirely simple, but can you answer them? What if this madman is right? What if the Quran is fully detailed? What if I am wrong by following something else that Allah doesn't, that Allah explicitly tells me not to follow, whether I want to close my ears to it or not? What implications would it have on me if the Quran is fully detailed and there is no hadith? Man, I never considered that. What have I got to lose by looking at this differently? I know that he uses he used to see things the way that I do, but but why did he change his mind after accepting the Quran? Why did he change his why did he accept the Quran, hear the hadith, listen to him for a little bit, go back to the Quran, and then completely go away from the hadith? Why? Why would he do that? What if if he's guided by Allah, why would he turn away from the hadith? No, the last question would be for you. Why do these intelligent ladies and gentlemen all think that the Hadith are wrong after they read the Quran through? Some of these guys and these gals are showing how much they believe in Allah by just being on there and by putting their ideas out there in the first place. They're not sheikhs or scholars. They're just regular people just trying to deliver the message of Allah. Why? Why do I think that these people are wrong? In understanding anything, one must consider that their own perceptions, their own reality, and their own experiences are leading them to an ultimate truth. They must also know what their guidance and their mission is. They must work for it, and they must study hard to become successful. No one has opinions based on a lack of knowledge because every opinion is based on the perfect amount of knowledge that that person has at that time whether that opinion is wrong or not 
The only thing that changes a false understanding is a true teaching. The only thing that can change your false understanding is the true teaching. And nowhere in the Hadith does it say that this is true and that you won't find any contradiction because you do. Everywhere in the Quran, we are reminded about perfection and understanding. Everywhere we are understanding that this is a true and awesome message from an outstanding creator and an honorable messenger. The reason why I say these things to you is because I fear a day when Allah will ask me about the questions that all of you have. There is going to be a day where Allah will inform me that I could have helped and I didn't help and that will count against me. I fear that way more than I fear for anything on you because I know what I've done wrong and I know what I've done right and I'll have to pay for my punishment and my retribution if Allah chooses not to accept my repentance. It's going to be great. And I don't want to be in a pit of fire with those who commit shameless acts against people all over the world in the name of their religion, in the name of their pride, and in the name of their greed. I don't want to be with those people. Therefore, as the Prophet Muhammad did, I say to you, Qul huwa lawahad. So he is Allah, the one. You are a test for me, and I recognize and accept your test as Allah sees that you have crossed my wake. And regardless of any of your decisions, my decision is entirely mine. I am doing my best to deliver a message that I'm told to ponder, to deliver, to read, to recite, to consider. I fear the day that you will bear witness against me for what I said in falsehood, which is why I speak calmly and humbly, and I ask you to listen, to verify anything that I say, so that you cannot say, that Allah did not tell you in the Quran, that Allah did not find witnesses amongst you. Allah says in the Quran that he will raise up a people that will witness, witness the acts of the disbelievers and the believers. Wallahi, inshallah, I am witnessing a terrible, terrible amount of shirk going on in a community that says it is free of shirk. Did Allah promise you that the Hadith would be protected? Did Allah promise you that anything outside of the Quran would hold true? Did Allah tell you that? Did he, did he say you have another book to judge by? No, no. You surely, if you agree, if you think that, you are on a devastating path. And you will be, you will be met with your retribution for you teach others. You teach others what is not true. Man, woman, child, boy or girl. Your false teachings and your hopeless desires. The money that you make from purchasing false and idle tales. From accepting false and idle tales. Will be a painful torment to you. Unless you change and reform your ways give to the needy, the poor, you give to those who ask and those who don't ask, the wayfarer, that you hold your chastity, that you believe and that you keep your maintain your contact prayer all the time, that you fear Allah, that you worship Allah, that you have obedience to Allah, that you recognize the story, the message, the message, and you recognize the obedience that the messenger had in the Quran and you duplicate that as if your entire life depended on it. But I am just a dude. I am just a guy who just happened to stumble upon the Quran because Allah led him to there. And I repeat those things out of the Quran that the Prophet Muhammad said to the believers of his time. 
and I will continue to say it to the dis to the believers and the disbelievers of my time because I do I fear Allah. I fear Allah. I do not fear you. And there ain't nothing you can do that can there's nothing I can do to protect you from Allah, and there's nothing that you can do to protect me from Allah if I'm wrong. The only reason I'm standing up here saying these things is because I fear Allah and I'm confident in his book. And if I'm wrong, I would pray, inshallah, that he would lead me back to the straight path. Inshallah. But inshallah, he will lead those who hear this voice. That those who hear the call of the Quran, whenever any of the believers get on and make videos, pay heed to Allah. Don't follow any man or anybody else. There is not a scholar, a learned person, a ruler. There is nobody on this entire earth who can guide you straight. If Allah would not have you got it straight. Do you think that Allah would guide you straight? If you listen to men as you listen, are you supposed to listen to Allah? What is what kind of what kind of worship is that? What type of dedication is that? A creation who forgets who their creator is to the point where they feel like they need another man to explain to them what Allah wants them to do and what Allah wants them not to do when they have something in their possession that is a book for all times, for all times, for all peoples. It is a guidance, the truth, and a criteria for falsehood. Hey. Wake up. Wake up. This is not a game. This is a test. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you and God bless those believers. Warn the disbelievers and those who set up partners with Allah. Or set up partners with Allah's book. Or go against the word of the messenger. Not to accept any hadith but the hadith in the Quran. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you and God bless you. Goodbye.